Hey kids, so I've learned a few things about some end games recently that I thought some of you that were a little bit more advanced might appreciate. A lot of times when we're looking at our end game theory, we're trying to figure out how do I take my position and win the game. What we've been doing in the past several weeks is looking at how do I use tactics to get to a winning position. But what happens when you find yourself in a position where you just can't win and you're trying to prevent your opponent from winning? Sometimes that extra half point is the difference between getting a trophy and not getting a trophy at a tournament. So we're going to look at a couple of ways to try to draw games that you can't win. So take a look at this position where white has a knight and black has a pawn. Well, you should know already from this that white cannot win this game. There's no way to checkmate the black king with just a knight on the board. Instead, White's goal is to stop this pawn from finishing its march down the board and becoming a queen on h1. So this knight is in a great position to do just that. Notice the knight is blocking the pawn from moving to the square. But what if the king just steps up? Okay, well the knight has to move. Now, if the knight runs away, the pawn just advances. But if the knight transitions over to e3, now if the pawn advances, then the knight is able to fork the king and pawn and the game is drawn. Okay, so, well then, instead of advancing the pawn, let's go chase down that knight. All right, so the king moves over to the knight. Now the knight can't go back here anymore because he just get captured. So he has to come down here. But again, if the pawn moves forward, the knight captures and the game is drawn. Okay, so then what about the king stepping down here? Well, then the knight can swing over here. Now the pawn is blockaded. And if the king comes back, the knight just goes back to the original position. And if the king comes this way, the knight comes back here with check. If the king comes here, check and so on. So what I want you to see here then is all these moves involve the knight bouncing on these four squares until a fork presents itself. The only way for that pawn to advance is for black to give the knight an opportunity to fork the king and the pawn. And so this should be a drawn game. All right, well then let's go back even further. Let's say we are starting way over on this square. It looks like the knight is too far away to prevent this pawn. The pawn is only two squares away from becoming a queen. And this knight is way over here. It's got to move all the way over here to stop this from making it. Well, let's see what we can do. Let's say the knight comes to this square and starts making its way over. If the king moves over to g2, the knight is able to come in with check onto one of these four squares that it's trying to reach. Oops, not that one, that one. And so if the knight reaches these four squares with check, the knight's in time. So the king can't go to g2. So maybe the king goes to g3. That should stop check, right? Ah, well, the knight can still pop into this square and if the pawn moves, the knight is able to fork the king and the pawn. So g3 doesn't work. How about g1? Okay, well, now if we move here, the pawn is just going to be able to make it all the way down the board. So I can't jump into my four squares yet. So I need to look for a place where I'm going to be able to fork g1 and h2. That means I need the knight to land on this square. Well, the best way to do that and still be able to get to one of my squares that I come into is by moving the knight to e5. So on the next move, the knight is able to pop into g4 if the king moves, or f3 if the pawn moves. So notice, pawn moves to here, knight comes in and forks. If the king moves instead, then the knight comes in and we reach our original position. So this is a really interesting sort of puzzle because you can start, just start with the king and pawn over here and try your knight at different squares on the board and see which ones 
you can get your knight in to stop that pawn from queening. So this is about as far away as you can get and still work. If you're also if you're too far behind, the pawn is able to just go forward. So just try your knight at different squares and see if you can find a way to get that knight into this four squares just in time to prevent that pawn from moving forward or making sure that you're going to be able to fork the king and pawn either by putting your knight on f3 to fork at g1 and h2 or f1 to fork at g3 and h2. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully that is useful for you. It's uh, something that I hadn't seen until just recently, so I thought you guys might enjoy learning it too. All right, I'll see you next time.